YouTube. This is a little um, project that I've had on the go for a little while and what it is is this dirty piece of stuff here is a Ferguson TE20 um, rear axle and the Ferguson TE20, the early ones, they had a 16 spline axle in them. Um, the later tractors had a 19 spline axle which were a better thing, they lasted better and um, and with the 19 spline axle, um, they kept that going up into the Ferguson 35 and I believe even the 135 and that as well. So, But to get this, um, to replace the seal down in here, um, there's, a, there's a shrink ring in there. So we have to drill down through there, split that, and then that comes to the back of a bearing. And the bearing can be really, really tight. Um, I have a 35, 40 tonne on them trying to get them apart and I've actually, I broke a press some number of years ago now doing one of these and they are really tight. So, but in saying that I tell people now and then they're tight and, and sometimes you just have a have an easy kill, you split that, you give it a bump and out she comes and <laughs> she's a beauty. But anyway, what, what the plan is, is to get this collar, you get the collar off and then this housing here, that's your axle housing. And to support that to press down through, it's a tapered roller bearing here, and to press down through, this housing needs to be supported. So this piece of plate here, I've had this tucked away for a long time. It was a tool for a John Deere many years ago, and, and when I was working at John Deere, they were throwing it out, and I asked could I have it, and they, they let me have it. So, so what the plan is, is, we have to measure this boss here and that boss slides up the axle so we need a hole in here the same size as that boss so it sits over snugly and then we need to pick up these six holes and so when we go to put this axle in the press to press the axle shaft out of the centre we have a nice wide flange to put on the bed of the press we have it bolted up so it's a dead true 90 degree push to the top and then later on up on the top of the axle here where the spline is we'll make a socket that goes over the end of the press and goes over the end of here so it can't go sideways and the the day that we had an accident with one it shot off and we're, we're just lucky and um, lucky no one got hurt doing it and it was a love job for a bloke and he just picked up his parts and walked out the door and it took us the next rest of the week to fix the bloody press but anyway that's that's life. that's how it goes so, so what we have to do is measure this, this collar here, this raised section, just in there. We have to measure that. And then I'm thinking probably take it over onto the big old Max and lathe and put it in the forge or and we'll bore this surface out here to suit. And then we will have to see if we can do the pitch circle diameter thing once more. What do we have there? Centre to centre is 133. I've got total travel of 145. Um, yes, yeah, in the y axis, I believe, 145. So we should be able to just do the PCD and get that bang on. And this fella here, we'll have to get some calipers in and measure that. I've probably got a micrometer that would get around there. And um, this bit, it looks all shiny, I had to bead blast it, it had surface rust all over it. So, um, so look, we'll get some measurements on here, this will be a little project over, over a, I don't know, take a little while I suppose. By the time we get it set up, we get our measurements, we get it set up, we bore this, we put the holes in here, then we make the other bit and then we'll actually press a, a new seal and a collar on some axles and, and away we go. We've got a 1948 T20 over there that we've half restored, we've got all the engine done, but the axles need doing for that. And so getting this ready, it does two things for us. If customers come to Queensland Tractor Spares and they buy a, a kit and they can't fit the axle, we can offer to fit it for them. Um, so we can value add there. Um, and usually we've got to try and send them off to someone else and that person's too busy and they have to wait. But um, if we get it set up right, I used to be able to just walk out the back with them 
and tell them, go and have a cup of coffee, go and have lunch, come back in an hour or so, and I could have the job done for them. And if they travelled any mile, any miles, to, or many miles, I should say, to get to see us, they could go home with it the same day with a new seal, new bearing, new collar heated on, all that sort of thing. So, so we'll go through the exercise of making the puller, and then there'll probably be another little episode or two of actually doing the job after we've made the puller. Because people, there's many of those tractors out there, and, and I believe people will be interested in how to do it. Um, you'll notice around here there's six bolts. When they went up to the late 35 Fergies and the 135s, etc., they doubled up the number of bolts here. Now, I don't know why they had to do that. Um, you would think if they doubled it up, they must have had a bit of warping in the housing here, I suspect, but I've, I don't know. I'm just presuming that. So look, stay tuned, we'll do some measurements and we'll work out where we're going to put this baby to, uh, to bore it. We have a nice flat surface here, even though it's somewhat pitted, but there's no need to fly it or anything like that. And we have a nice thick boss here, so um, total thickness, the one I used to have at the other shop was um, one inch in total, it was a stainless flange. This is 40 mil from front to rear, so by the time we have our 40 mil. Um, a nice flat surface to do it. it it should be as strong as anything so I'm, I'm happy to have this and to tell you the truth I forgot I had the bloody thing and I was doing a clean up and I, I had a bit of inch steel there to do it with but I had to cut it down and gin around to get it and today I was cleaning behind an old fridge where I had my welding stuff I was something went around the back and here's this thing up against the wall and I thought oh you silly bugger you had that there for that so, so while we've got it We'll work with it. So stay tuned. We'll do a couple of episodes, and um, we'll follow along if you can. And um, yeah, we'll just make ourselves a, a Ferguson axle puller. Well, our axle flange here. We've got the micrometer. I've put the anvil in that suits. I've cleaned up the surfaces here, and this should give us our measurement across. That's nice and snug there. If we give it tooth hair clearance and lock it in, yep, that'll be nice when we go to do the job. I'll just run through that again, just make sure I'm check myself. Yep, 4.248. So we'll take it to 50. 4.250. So four and a quarter, which gives us just a, just a loose fit that'll be nice to get all the things lined up. So we'll write that on our piece of paper and then we'll work out what we're doing with the main plate over the back here. Right, now that we've measured this at four and a quarter, just out of interest, we'll just do a rough measurement here. And 0.3743, so three and three quarter roughly. So we've got half an inch to take out of here. So about a quarter of an inch each side. And that'll match that, that nicely. And we might get that underway. Well, we've set her up in the big old Maxim. And the old Maxim's a great old lathe, about 1953, I believe. And, um, We've got the old original bore, good to within one ten th oh. Yeah, point oh oh five. So anyway, each rock, each marks um, a ten thousand. So we're within a couple. Well, that's fine to us. The new hole will be bored parallel to this back plate, to the back plate here. So it'll be at ninety degrees through there. So we'll get our old boring bar going and I'll see if I can sneak round behind you here. And there's our old boring bar. Quite a size. You know, it's got a nice tip on it so we'll, we might shout it a new tip just for this job and set a height up and let's get stuck into it. Right, we've just touched off. 
but we'll get this, we'll give her a bit of a run. Okay, we'll actually um, have a quick measure and just see how close we are. We've got a fair way to go yet, but I just like a mark. Right at the moment, three point nine two. Checking a zero again. Yep. So we'll whack a few cuts in, we'll come back again when we're close. The same measurement. About five or six there clearance, so that's good. We're aiming on three, but we've got a couple more, so hey, no extra charge for that. Okay, we'll get this out, and we'll get it ready to do the pitch circle diameter for the other pieces. Right, I hope the light's okay. I've got our, our Fergie axle puller sitting in my little mill here, and I've got a small, a small um, centre drill sitting in the in the chuck I've taken the mill it's maximum that way then it's maximum back this way then I've hit the DRO for half of that measurement so that should bring us back to a zero point on the DRO so we find the DRO find the zero DRO don't know what that is so we find the zero on the DRO And we're just coming up to it. Just went past it. Okay, there it is there. 
So what I might do, I might lock the carriage. Now Bruce has shown you before the centering rule. So you have a zero here. So we have zero, 50, 100, 150. And this is in millimetres, same on the other side. Or same on the other end. So what we need to do is work out that we have 50, we have 105, 6, 7, 108 millimetres across the hole that we did yesterday, close enough. So at 108, half of 108 is 54. So if we line 54 up here, Line 54 up there. Wind this down. And once we're happy that we're in the centre, we can now move our job to that zero point. So that the little drill sits right on the zero. So if we have 54 this side of the centre, 54 at the other side of the centre. Well, I know that if I bolt this down, because I'm a bit short of travel, because it's a small hobby mill, um, that should give me the advantage of the most travel I can have on the Y axis. The X, there's no trouble at all, we have plenty there. But on the Y, if we check at 54, 54, 54, I wonder could I set that up a bit so you can see it better. I'll just line this up and try and try and get the light behind it so you can get a good idea on, on what we're looking at. No, it doesn't look like we're going to get any focus. I'll try and shift the light back this way. Like that's a bit better. And there you go, you can see the 54 on either side of the centre. That's a good thing. Bruce Witham in Perth brought these to my attention and um, I'm glad he did. They're a handy tool for something like this. Anyway, now we know where, where our centres are I can bolt that plate down and then I'll do a test run um, with the pitch circle diameter function on the mill and um, we'll just see if we can get the, the full number of bolts in the full range that we'd like. Right, I'm fighting for light a bit tonight, but anyway, we'll, we'll soldier on, see how we go. We can shift the shadow. Anyway, we'll see how we go. Look, I've just gone over and measured the axle and the studs centre to centre are 133.86 mils. So if we call that 134, even come out to 135. So at 135, if that was 140, we'd have 70 millimetres each side of centre here. So what we can do with the ruler in the centre, we can run our travel out now. And so if we can get to, say, 70 millimetres, even 67 and a half, that would be ideal. We know we can do the job. We've got enough room to use the DRO. So if you bring the table back, holding the bit of downforce on it. Okay, we have 73 millimetres that way from centre. And just check that we have the same this way. If not, we'll have to make an adjustment. Look at that, that'll be 72 or 3, 
very close. So that'll be the optimum position for us to track out our 12 holes. Now you notice the axle yesterday had six holes in it. Um, the later tractors have 12 holes, so to make the tool more versatile, we're going to set up the DRO and do 12 holes. So every 30 degrees, we're going to have a hole. So look, that's all we can do just for this evening. I'll come back in an afternoon or so and we'll set up the DRO again. It'll be the same basic setup as we did for the spare wheel carrier on the boat trail. But um, yeah, it looks okay. If I pan back out, you can see the setup. I've got one, two, three blocks, four, one, two, three blocks laying down on the bed to give me clearance underneath here. And I've just got clamps making sure that the legs are coming down straight above the one, two, three clamp. So very simple setup. Well, I think our little mill is just going to do the job for us. Anyway, we'll see. Well, I don't have axle here. We need to work out the pitch circle diameter. So, the best way I believe is come over the top of the camera, bring the vernier in, 144.46. So I'll just get my calculator on my phone going. So we have 144.46. minus 11.07 and you can see how that's done if you instead of trying to measure half of this stud and half of that stud there's two of them there so you just measure the one so that gives us 133.39. So we come up to 133.39. Oh, we'll keep jumping. <laughs> but 133.39, that's our pitch circle diameter. And the information is important for when we go to feed that into the DRO. The DRO will want to know that. So we'll make a note of that and then we can set the DRO up. Well, this is a little tool I like to use. I use it for centering and finding edges and that. It's just got a little probe. And there is a margin for error with it, I believe, but I can get it to zero every time. It's just you have your own feel with it. So what we need to do is run him across Nice and gentle as you get to the edge. There we go. So we just touch that off. Take until it just touches. Zero our Y axis. Turn this 180 degrees, just so if that's out a bit, we're both on the same angle. Bring this fella across once more. Just turn until he just touches. We have 103.605, which is 103.605. So we go half of that, half of the Y axis, and that tells us we need to come back 51.8. So we just wind this until the DRA goes back to zero. And then that becomes our absolute zero. So there we are, there's zero. 
we do the same for the other axis. I'll come up this other end. So now we have to tell it that we like to do pitch circle diameter. So we have to Okay, the diameter that we worked out earlier is 133.39 millimetres. So we go 133.39, enter, number of holes, 12, enter. Starting angle, zero degrees, enter. Ending angle, now 12 into 36, so we have to come back to 330 degrees. So 330, enter. And that's where we go for hole one. We'll just do a run through the holes and just check that we've got 12 up there. Two, three. Yep, I think we're working. And what that tells us is the Y axis stays where it is, the X axis. has to work its way to zero and that's where we start drilling. This is in millimetres. Um, we can do millimetres or thou or whatever we like. It doesn't matter to me. I can chug along in both of them alright. Lock the beds. So what I'll do with this one, just to check it, I don't want to bugger it up, is I'm going to put a paint pen in the chuck and I'm just going to come down and go around the 12 holes and have a bit of a, a bit of a spot. We'll just put a spot of paint on each one and that'll make sure in my mind that we're doing the right thing, we're on the right track. 